Tony likes to play golf. But today, he shanks and wallows. He slashes and sprays, for he suffers from the problem known to golfers the world over. He's off his game. It's a cruel game when all you're making is divots instead of pars. And anyone can have an ordinary round of golf, but today is no ordinary day. The fickle gods of golf have decided to have a wee bit of sport with Donny. They will set him a challenge and send him on a journey that will test his manly metal. A hero's quest down the long road to the ancestral seat of golf itself, into the very heart of the great game. But the road is littered with tattered scorecards of the weak and amateur who couldn't rise to the challenge. Can Donny cross the bridge of champions and par his way into history? In July days, doing its bumpy brays of whales on Waxcliffe slide. And then as I got older, the game of golf I tried. And this became a lifelong ploy. And no trophies, I've won nil. Each simmer, I heat back again to play the Verti Shell. It's difficult to say exactly why people come here. Many people come because they have some kind of difficulty in their lives at the time, you know. Sami Ling is um, a monastery and Tibetan centre here in the borders of Scotland. And the reason that we're here is to offer to those people, whoever it is, whether they choose to be Buddhist or not, what they're looking for, if we can. There's great wealth in the Buddhist heritage and we do our best to preserve that and make it available in forms that people can use. So we really hope that the people who come here will find something that they can take away with them. Scotland, hey? Well, it is the home of golf. I'll go along with that. Obviously, someone thinks I need a course in self-improvement. Starting at a monastery seems pretty extreme though. We can help people to learn to be less angry and aggressive, more caring, more contented, happier. We will do whatever we can to provide that and to pr promote it within individuals and between people and even between nations if possible. So we do whatever we can to provide something that people can access to take away, things that people can learn or learn to do. You do your best and there's still more you could do. Arnie was right. As a golfer, you always try to improve. And being calm is one of the most important traits you can have. I need to leave the bad shots in the past and get more zen into my game. I had a feeling that this is going to be a long journey. Some folk are just born fortunate, and I'm one of them. For fate decreed that hike among the hills should be my home. Have I been off a great fee? And all my life I will, that I abide here in the tune that lies below the verti shell.
Roddy. Donny. Ryan. Donny. Bring it on. Three iron, draw it in, right in the pin. Just like hundreds of years ago, the Scots prepared again for war. But this time, the weapons are golf clubs. And the enemy, this lone Australian. I challenged some locals to get into the mind of Scottish golfers. The Hoyt Golf Club formed in 1877 and its beauty distracts you. I'm sure this will affect my putting. A day like this in perfect conditions. You don't often get that in Scotland. It's usually blown a holy. In Scotland, historically, it's always been a working man's pastime as well as for the, um, the middle class and upper class. I think the game suits the Scots. That's a lovely strike. Straight at it. Hold your line. Well done. On the dance floor anyway. I have to have one of these too. Aye. No, uh, it's the same putter that Sandy Lyle used. The Scotsman when he won his first Masters. So I think golf's in Scots blood. Yeah. Seen it started here. A lot of people like to claim it started other places, but it definitely started here. <laughs> That's what I need to do. We're really lucky here in the borders to have have courses like this. I'm biased. Though. I think we've got the best views and probably the best course in the borders. You walk out a course and every day you feel a little bit different. Some days if it's stressful days at work, you're maybe a wee bit stiff, and it's trying to let sort of relax and just let the golf flow. That's a hard bit sometimes. Half my problem is trying to put that out my head and just thinking, swinging slowly and looking at the ball. What's, what's between your ears is, is probably as important as what your, what your golf swing is. Um, I mean, you can hone your golf swing and, and be in all the right positions at the right time. But if your mind's, if your mind's not right, if you're thinking of the wrong things, if you're tense, it just affects the whole swing. It's a small nation, and I think we all have a wee bit of chip on our shoulder and we've all got a point to prove. Mm -hmm. But when you think back to all the great things, all the great Scots that we've had, and how many in the sporting world, how many champions we've had in different sports for the, for the size of the nation, it, it's, it's amazing, and I think that's a testament to the, to the character of the Scots. It's hard to imagine, now you've got all this area to hit it, you still find the magnetic trees and the magnetic rough. It seems to draw the ball in, doesn't it? It's really just you against yourself, against the course, and uh, there are not a lot of games like that. I mean, but it's it's certainly that the, 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 the trusting thing about golf that everybody trusts each other, that you get to do the right thing, that you get to play the, the game in the spirit. It's meant to be played. If you've got a bad lie, you take that bad lie. You take your medicine and you, and you get on with. Pressure, chip. Oh. Oh. The passion and devotion both players showed made me realise how this wasn't just a weekend game to them, this was a challenge. I also have the same feelings towards every game I play. Oh my word! That's it. <laughs> years and years of golfing history and we get blown away. Somebody's never played the course before. Well played, Donny. Thank you very much, guys. I feel a lot better now. So I'll just take all this good feeling, good vibes, energy, and I'll continue with my journey. And I'm going to take away that pathetic putt at the end <laughs> onto the next round. And I'm going to take up bowling. <laughs> <laughs> OK, my shout. Let's go. <laughs> As I survey the eternal landscape, feel at home, I can, I will, for heaven must surely be just like the Vertish Hill. I want to learn about Scottish history. Never mind that. You want to know about Scottish history? I'll tell you about Scottish history. Come here. A peculiar little rain-swept, wind-swept, grey, self-defeating country which had to play the whole of history for survival and not for victory because we were next door to a super state. Oh, it has an extremely bloody history of the six Jameses. Only one of them died happily in bed, 
and that's because he emigrated to England and became James I. The rest of them all died of falling deaths. Scotland isn't Scotland unless you can see some blood and guts, really. Uh, <laughs> it's an old country, a complicated country. You can't make a simple statement about Scotland. People come to Scotland and want the past, and we've got lots of past. You have to imagine a bunch of young guys, maybe farm workers, maybe whatever. After work, they knock a ball about with a stick. Maybe they do it in teams, maybe they do it individually. Eventually it becomes a game of knocking the ball with a stick as far as you can go. And that's the beginning of golf. Golf has been banned several times. Uh, I think it was James II who, who said that the, the young men should be at the butts practicing archery and not at ye fit butt and golf. Because it was seen as a distraction, you were, you were supposed to be practicing to go and beat the enemy. The man who designed the modern golf courses old Tom Morris, wasn't born until 1821. It was 1860s, 1870s, before the big golf courses at Carnoustie and St Andrews and, and the other ones were planned. When the English aristocracy came up, when Scotland became a flavour of the decade, and this working class, this agricultural labourer's game became smart. Golf became a fashionable sport. While the English aristocracy in Scotland were playing this peasant game and eating their marmalade and their kippers for breakfast, they then took it to England. So what came to Scotland as a working class game came to England as a game of the elite. And it's remained as a game of the elite. It's one of the things that put Scotland on the map and there's lots of money internationally, yeah. I didn't realise Scotland had such a bloody history. Neighbouring countries fighting for centuries and at the same time the game of golf morphed into what it is today. And to hear that at one time it was banned by the monarchy. Could you imagine a world without golf? The working class people created a game by hitting a ball as far as it could go. This goes back to the Scottish competitive spirit and the instinct to win. Didn't he know it, but he was connecting to a country. A country with a bloody history. This made him appreciate and realise how the Scots drew strength from hardship in a time recorded. The literature and the bookshop filled the senses with references to the past, parallel with times of today. from its deep bed and heaved and high, and sent the fragment through the sky, a route beyond the far best mark. Donny was now connecting to the home of golf. But he realised he wasn't here just for golf as there was one more important challenge to face on the road to St Andrews. To the 56 band wait over the bar. Well, the Braveheart games and Scottish nights are quite unique. They're not like any other Highland games on the circuit. Certainly we'll have the, the heavy events, the pipe band, the highland dancing, but there are things which are slightly different about it. We've got the strongman challenge. Up and over she goes, well, it's open. Power lifting and all. The games are certainly uh, originating in Scotland, but going further back, uh, uh, you could go right back to the beginning of time, when, uh, from the dawn of human life, when primordial man contested in running, jumping, wrestling. <laughs> 
and lifting and throwing of various weights, which would usually be stones at that time. We can go as far back as the 11th century for the Scottish Highland Games, when it was an organised uh, competition by the, the Scottish clan chiefs in their castles. It takes years and years, dedication, hard training, physical effort. It's a Scottish spirit and uh, we want to keep it alive. Haggis. G'day mate, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, haggis, make it big and strong. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, look at these guys out there. Is this what these guys eat? They grew up on haggis. <laughs> so if I eat haggis, I'll be. <laughs> Maybe I'm not sure it's like spinach for for Popeye. But <laughs> that's it makes you strong, yeah. Oh, okay, I might have a chat to them. Yeah. See, see what the se other secrets are. Strength. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, good, mate. Good. To try it. Uh, yeah, I wanna. Yeah. Get some strength somewhere, some Scottish strength. Well, uh, I'm the Scottish amateur champion at this, so it's traditionally a strength event. So if you want to prove that you're strong enough to do a sport, I'll gladly let you try it, okay? So if I can do this, I can conquer other sports. If you can do this, uh, you'll conquer any sport in Scotland. That's good okay. to know. Okay, now first of all, what is this? This is a, a small cable. Uh, it's traditionally done at Highland Games. It's done for accuracy, not distance. So you're trying to turn it over and make it land at 12 o'clock, perpendicular on a clock face. Uh, for, that's the best toss you can have. So the Scots, especially at the Highland Games, are very proud of their strength. It's a natural heritage that they have, and it, it's good to keep it going. Uh, it just uh, keeps the body strong and the mind please. strong. Based on the history of, you know, Scottish sports, Scottish bravery, Physical endurance, that's obviously what these well, games so, are about. It came from the clans. Mm. Uh, the strength events were used to pick the strongest men from bodyguards. Yep. So if you can do it, you'll be proven how strong you are and how capable we are. Okay. Our okay. sports. So I'll get put it up here. Yep, let's give it a go. You put your feet together like this at the bottom of the cable. You can just put them right up. Yep. Oh, okay. up oh, right, yep. All right, yep. How much is this way? Yeah. <laughs> keep your hands like that. Yeah. So if you keep your hands like that, on this side, put, put it around the tree. Yeah. Go down to the bottom. And I'll lift it up and you pick it up. We'll take it right down to the bottom. Okay. Okay? Put your hands under it. Yep. Lean it against you. Okay? Straighten up. Lean forward. Lean forward. Lean forward. Yeah. You must lean forward. Okay. If the table's on you, you must lean forward. You got it? I think so. Lean more forward. Lean more forward. Okay. Okay. That's you. You're on your own. Okay. Run. And the cable comes forward. Turn it. Now. Almost. It was a good attempt. I think I needed to. You have to. Remember that side of it pulling up, not yeah. forward. You're leaning forward. It's all yours. Run. To the three parties. Up! Yay! Get out of Excellent. Ready for anything now? Good. <laughs> the, the kilt's just part of the tradition. Not just the, the strength of the athletics involved in the Highland Games, but the kilt was traditional Scottish wear at the time. It was just carrying on the same traditions as the heavy events. Uh, so to this day, you've got to wear the kilt, and that's what makes the Highland Games special. I had some haggis. Is it true that that's what you eat? To be strong. Really? I make mean, haggis in a butcher. Uh, yeah? Yeah. And haggis is very good for you. It's all natural ingredients. If I eat that before my golf game, is that yeah. the way to go? Yeah, that's the way to go. Beat all these silly people at the golf course. I've got to beat myself though. It's uh well, you've proved you're strong enough. I think I'm ready. Okay. Jason, thank you very much. No problem, good luck. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> The caber toss earned my tartan stripes at the Highland Games and I wanted to keep with tradition. It was time to get a kilt. Edinburgh, cobblestones, haggis and shopping. There was certainly no shortage of kilts in this town. A hero's quest, quest down, down the winding road to the ancestral seat of, of golf, golf itself. itself. You perhaps only have to go to the first tee on any day in the season 
and see the number of golfers we have there who are playing it probably for their one and only time. And, and, you, and you, you can see, you can feel just what it means to them. Um, I've seen people down there in tears. I've seen people just stating what a wonderful, how, how long they've been waiting for it, how much they've saved to do it, and, and just feeling the, 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 the tension of that tee shot, but also feeling the history and uh, the tradition and knowing that every golfer has walked these fairways. It's, it's phenomenal. And now that the, the, the feedback is constant and the feedback is always very positive, it's emotional, it's inspirational. St Andrew's Old Course, that's why I was sent here, to be a better golfer. As I stood on the tee, I thought of the champions who have created history before me and the ones who will after me. The town is one massive country club. Mike from St Andrew's Lynx Trust, he'll give me some local knowledge on these final three holes. So Mike, we're on hole number 16. Tell me about this hole. Well, 16 is, uh, is named Corner of the Dyke because it's a slight dogleg to the right, Donald. Um, it uh, is a fairly short par four. What you do have to be conscious of is the principal's nose bunkers uh, just down the, the sort of left, left middle of the fairway there. So the safe line is to bail out to the left, as you can see just down that side, or uh, to take on the, the tiger line down the right. Jack Nicholas once said that uh, anyone that didn't go down the right was just an old man. So, so that's the challenge for you. Uh. I just want to be the ball. Who would have thought a Murray from Brisbane would be playing St Andrews, old course. Yeah, I think, I think you're just short of the bunker there, Donald, so it's uh, nice and safe, good line into the green. <laughs> so usually the shot is to land it just the front edge of the green and try to let it roll up, because trying to carry it and land it on the plateau and, and keep it there is, is quite tough. The 16th was really testing me. I found the deep grass and the pot bunkers more than once. I couldn't wait to pop this hole out. Well, your, the safest line is, is, is straight on the, the spire there, Donald. You can almost go in the Ward Hotel there and bring it back from, from <laughs> this part of the tee. So aim at the hotel and come back. Yeah, 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 if you're brave. Most of the windows are reinforced glass, just in <laughs> case. Um, to, to be safe, I would say, just on that church spire, just yep. to the right of it. We see all these people here. It's like their spiritual journey for them too, isn't it, to come play on this course? Ab absolutely. I mean, I think uh, particularly when you get to this, this part of the course, and the, the 17th hole is, uh, is the road hole. It's the most famous hole in, in, in golf. And uh, so many people come here and they've seen Jack Nicklaus, they've seen Tiger Woods play from this tee. You've seen them take on this building and I think it just has that uh, almost religious uh, effect on people. Um, people do tend to talk in terms of a pilgrimage to St Andrew's Links, the home of golf, and, and this is where they want to come and play at least once in their lifetime. Um, and when you get to this part of the course, you're coming back towards the town and it's such, a, such an amphitheatre, such, such an experience. It's all in front of you. Um, the road hole is one of the most famous golf holes in the world. It's a long par four, but it's not the distance that tests the players. It's the green. People do take the time out to make the journey from wherever they are all the way to here to the old course at St Andrews. All right, let's try and find this ball. Anything short feeds left and into the road hole bunker, which again is a, a tremendously difficult uh, and deep pot bunker. Uh, very narrow, not a lot of room to get up and, and, and get down. So it's a, it's a challenging hole. It's very challenging. Two holes ago, this 17th, we're halfway down, and then that final 18th. Even from the short grass, there remains one of the most difficult shots imaginable. A short bump and run to the green, that was like glass, which helped my ball go over to the infamous road. Thankfully, the thick grass stopped my ball from going on the road. However, the job was still not done. I really struggled. 
unfamiliar clubs. I'm wearing a kilt. I've got something underneath, so that's all right. A bit blustery out here. So I'm now coming up to one of the most famous Finnish holes in golf, the 18th at St Andrews Old Course. I mean, this is this is a special location, Donald. I mean, it's 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 such a famous spot. This view, looking back to the Arne Clubhouse, the Hamilton Hall there, is just just fantastic. You you have the whole town surrounding you as you play down this final hole, and it's uh, it's played host to so many great moments in golf. Um, in 2005, Jack Nicklaus played his last round of professional golf and stood on the smoking bridge there and waved goodbye to, to golf. And uh, that day, there were 55,000 people around the old course watching, and it was a very emotional farewell. Uh, you also had Tiger playing down the first about the same time and it was almost like the, the baton was being handed over. In terms of the hole itself, it's a, it's a nice wide open par 4, it's one of the widest fairways in golf, um, sharing fairway with the, the first hole. You really can't do anything wrong here. Uh, so over to you, just a nice, nice straight drive and, uh, and, and you're, you're set up for the hole. Suddenly you are um, coming up back into that town, the most famous backdrop in golf. And there you are, and just I think that the, you know the pulse rate, the heartbeat just goes a little bit faster, and you just got to slow it down. But it, but walking up that final fairway just is majestic. You know there's loads of people watching you, and and you know you're hitting a shot that others all over the world are aspiring to hit, and it it, it yeah it brings on the nerves. So we get low handicappers, unlike me, very low handicappers, missing the ball, topping the ball, and and really bowing to the pressure. Got some good advice from Mike, so I try to take it on board. Club seven on, landed up there, stopped dead. So let's see if we can get the three. Hopefully we can. Just a little bit shy. Not bad. I needed more to hold his line. The power, the strength, the spirituality. Everything. It's just work to play this game and conquer the 18th at least. Thank very you very point. much. Well played. Final hole, the 18th. Um, we were saying it before, you know, it's a great finish hole, the home of golf. I am so happy I got a four there. I can take that away from everything that I've learned over the last amount of time that I've been here. Your advice has been very valuable too. Um, thank you very much. I don't know how to thank you. you know, it's just one of those feelings playing on this course. So. It's been great. Well, you're very welcome, Donald. It's been great having you here, and it's, it's a great experience uh, bringing people here for the first time and letting them see and experience this, uh, this wonderful golf course. So well played. Well done. Thank you. You can only get into the clubhouse at St Andrews if you're with a member. And just the sheer ambience of being inside the building and seeing the claret jug, the member's locker room, just the history, the clubs, the golf balls that are on display from a way, way back, some 250 years of history. And it just meets you when you open the door. It's a wonderful place if you're lucky and fortunate enough to enter. Really nice. That is the holy grail and therefore that is where people come to watch and play golf because you know, that is the place. I think anybody, whether it's uh, in Australia, America, doesn't really matter which country they come from, they all want to visit and play golf at St Andrews. St Andrews is the most relaxing place in Scotland, without a doubt. It is different to any other place. You don't get a slot machine, a neon light, it's just oldie worldy. It's just a great place to run. It's a bit of a pilgrimage. It is something that uh, probably every golfer in the world aspires to. So all the great golfers, from Bobby Jones, uh, you know, through to the great Tiger Woods have, have, have played here. It's, it's, it's really wonderful for St Andrews, but it's also wonderful for golf that everybody aspires to come here. Donny grew within himself over time. What had been embedded in Scottish life and culture for many centuries, the spirit, strength and the love of the game of golf. As he reflected on his rewarding journey, he wondered if he could make it home again. <laughs> <laughs>